In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And peace be with you. And with yours. And welcome to this, the 32nd Sunday of Ordinary Time. Two more to go, and we move into the liturgical new year. As we gather today, we do so calling to mind our sin, and we ask the Lord's forgiveness for those times we've not lived in the love and mercy of our God. Lord Jesus, you are the compassion of God in our world. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you nourish us so that we can be that compassion. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, through your love for us, you lead us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. And together we cry out. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to people of good We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glory you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King. O oh God, Almighty oh Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Wisdom is bright and does not grow dim. By those who love her, she is readily seen and found by those who look for her. Quick to anticipate those who desire her, she makes herself known to them. Watch for her early and you will have no trouble. You will find her sitting at your gates. Even to think about her is understanding fully grown. Be on alert for her, and anxiety will quickly leave you. She herself walks about looking for those who are worthy of her, and graciously shows herself to them as they go. And every thought of theirs coming to meet them. The word of the Lord. My 
from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We want you to be quite certain, brothers, about those who have died, to make sure that you do not grieve about them like the other people who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again and that it will be the same for those who have died in Jesus Christ. God will bring them with him. We can tell you this from the Lord's own teaching, that any of us who are left alive until the Lord's coming will not have any advantage over those who have died. At the trumpet of God, the whole voice of the archangel will call out the command and the Lord himself will come down from heaven. Those who have died in Christ will be first to rise and those of us who are still alive will be taken up in the clouds 
together with them to meet the Lord in the air. So we shall stay with the Lord forever. With such thoughts of thee as these, you should comfort one another. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told this parable to his disciples. The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were sensible. The foolish ones did take their lamps, but they brought no oil. Whereas the sensible ones took flasks of oil as well as their lamps. The bridegroom was late and they all grew drowsy and fell asleep. But at midnight, there was a cry. The bridegroom is here. Go out and meet him. At this, all those bridesmaids woke up and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish ones said to the sensible ones, Give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. But they replied, There may not be enough for us and for you. You had better go to those who sell it and buy some for yourselves. They had gone off to buy it when the bridegroom arrived. Those who were ready went in with him to the wedding hall, and the door was closed. The other bridesmaids arrived later. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you solemnly, I do not know you. So stay awake, because you do not know either the day or the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. There are two themes that run to, through today's readings. Wisdom and being prepared. To deal with the various challenges that we encounter in life, we need to be prepared and we also need that incredible gift of wisdom. We know from experience the need to be prepared for the unexpected. However, wisdom is sometimes elusive and it's difficult to point out and to pinpoint, mainly because it seems to change the complexion as the situations in which it is needed change. For you see, the wisdom of parents in raising small children is very different from the wisdom required to deal with teenagers and adolescents. Ask any parent of teenage children. A wise judge is not the same as a wise grandparent or a wise politician. Some people acquire wisdom through suffering and bitter experience, while others demonstrate wisdom 
when they refuse to endure the suffering and pressure that is being inflicted upon them. Sometimes wisdom is equated with common sense, while at other times common sense and wisdom seem opposed to one another. There are times when we get the impression that wisdom is being expressed in very carefully crafted sentences and sayings. And at other times, we experience wisdom through the expression of silence. And paradoxically, in the world of literature, the greatest wisdom often comes from the mouths of fools. In today's first reading, wisdom is personified in a mysterious woman who is there to help those who seek her out, but who doesn't push her own agenda without first being invited. In this parable of the 10 bridesmaids waiting for the bridegroom, the challenge for each and every one of us is to understand the distinction between foolishness and wisdom. Those five who are called foolish are, were so because they were negligent and didn't plan ahead, whereas the five wise bridesmaids came prepared with extra oil just in case the bridegroom was delayed. The parable we're listening to from Matthew's Gospel is a, is a solid reminder that we're coming to the end of the church's year. The expectation for Matthew's community was the fact that the bridegroom, Christ, would return quickly. The second coming of Jesus, the end of time, was expected and was imminent in their eyes. Today's second reading from the, from the letter to the Thessalonians leaves us in no doubt about how the early Christian community anticipated that Jesus would return in their lifetime. How wrong they were. One of the constant refrains we hear these days is how much of a nanny state we live in. Every time that government legislates to change behaviour, the chorus goes up. Few people take time or are heard suggesting that such legislation is necessary simply because people refuse to take responsibility for their own actions. We've seen this so recently with the COVID-19 deniers and protesters here in Australia and right throughout the world. There can be reports of medical or other studies that prove that certain behaviours are dangerous and cost not only the individual, but all of society when they are not modified by often very simple changes. But you see, there are still those who refuse to believe. There are still those who refuse to listen. The parable of the gospel is often seen by many to be difficult because it appears to go in direct contradiction with, what, with that which Jesus was proclaiming by his words and his actions in so many places. He's shown as healing the lepers, reaching out to those on the edge, speaking to the fallen and calling his disciples to love one another. In this parable, five of the ten women are shown apparently acting in a selfish and self-serving manner. Yet it is these women who enter the banqueting hall, the symbol of the reign of God, and the apparent unfortunate ones who are left out in the darkness. What has happened to taking care of each other, particularly those in need? Well, the reality is, those who see the parable as unfair have missed the point. It's not about people in need, but about people who want the nanny state to look after them rather than they taking responsibility for themselves, preparing for every possibility. 
If five of the 10 could be aware that they might need extra oil, then what were the others thinking? Or were they like those people who believe they are owed something and that others can be responsible for their failure to act on their behalf? There will always be those who need to be assisted, but in the long run, an adult takes responsibility for their own actions, so they might then be available to assist those who truly need assistance. We are always called to an adult relationship with our God. And as such, we are called to take responsibility for our spiritual life. When we come to the Eucharist, we do so not to be told how we are to relate to, with our God or to be spoon fed like infants, but we come so that we might be fueled up, ready to greet the bridegroom. We are to leave reflecting on what we have heard and experienced to respond actively, not passively, receiving like those sponges in water. In reading some thoughts of Father Richard Leonard, he points out that Ignatius, Saint Ignatius of Loyola, seems to have understood today's gospel incredibly well. For the early church thought Jesus would return quickly. So when he didn't, there was a crisis of faith. Some Christians lived as though this imminent return was a fact. Matthew is reminding us that the Christian life is about wisdom. It is about right judgment and reading the signs of the times, the same call of the Second Vatican Council. And the best way to prepare for the future, as St. Ignatius tells us, is to let go of what is unhealed from the past as best we can and live in the here and the now. For you see, the reign of God calls for active participation and individual responsibility. A part of that responsibility is to assist others to take personal responsibility themselves. Parents agree to do this for their children when they bring them for baptism. People in St Vincent de Paul or any other gospel authentic assistance model must look for ways to bring people to their own achievable responsibility for their individual relationship with God. All too often, acts of charity are more about the giver feeling good about themselves and there are those who need the poor and needy to remain such so that they can, give, they can get that good feeling all the time. Also too often we want others to do for us, to tell us how to live and to take responsibility for our lives. So we have someone else to blame when it all goes wrong. Neither, neither model is authentic because neither honors the true dignity of each person and their ability to be prepared to welcome Christ the bridegroom. When we take responsibility for ourselves, we will not need the nanny state or a nanny church that dishonors both its mission and our mature relationship with God who calls us to the feast. So as we hear the word of God today, that call to wisdom, that call to be prepared is a call to us both individually and as a community. How do we respond? So we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, 
born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For our sin, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us lift up our hands in prayer and bring our needs to God, who is our help and our strength. That the church will remain faithful and be prepared for when the Lord comes. In your wisdom. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders of nations will be alert to opportunities for the promotion of peace. In your wisdom. Lord, hear our prayer. That people who are coming to the end of their lives will see Christ face to face. In your wisdom. Lord, hear our prayer. That married couples will grow in love, wisdom and perseverance. In your wisdom. Lord, hear our prayer. That those affected in any way by COVID-19 will be strengthened by the Lord and may those who are working towards the development of a vaccine be given wisdom and strength to achieve their goal. In your wisdom. Lord, hear our prayer. That we in this community will always have oil in our lamps and be ready to meet Christ among us. In your wisdom. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick within the community will be strengthened by Christ and know the compassionate support of this community. In your wisdom. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died in Christ will be with the Lord forever, especially those mentioned in the bulletin who have died recently and those whose anniversaries occur at this time. In your wisdom. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, your wisdom comes to all who desire her. Hear our prayer and help us to heed her word that warns us to stay awake and be prepared for Christ's coming. And we make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Surrender my 
my salvation In your love I've come to find a resting place In your love I've come to find a resting place My heart, your throne This life belongs to you Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your di divinity and even fashion for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. And through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. 
for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed sisters and brothers, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. And at the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we have the courage to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's now greet each other with a greeting of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And let us pray.
Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered. Through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Have a great week, everyone. God bless. Thank you.